Hi friends, it's Deanna here today, and today I'm bringing you a kind of a hack. Yeah, I guess it is a hack. Um, I am wearing right now the Essential Dolman dress, which I love because it's, because it's so easy to wear. Um, it's a Dolman style. It's got different um, necklines. This is the scoop neckline, but it's got also a boat neck neckline, and it's got different lengths to the skirt. This is the knee length, but it also has got a maxi length and a midi length. Um, it's a great pattern. Well, I was thinking... I have this gorgeous woven fabric. It's a very lightweight woven. And I think this would make a gorgeous maxi um, essential domin dress. Don't you think? So today we're going to try it and I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to use a light woven fabric to create this dress. And you will find, I'm hoping, that is a lot easier than we think because this is the way that this dress fits. It's very loose and very nice and comfy. So I think this is going to work out. Let's try it. <laughs> As you know, this pattern was created for knits, but I'm a rebel and I want to try it with wovens. Uh, it is very important that if you're going to try to use a woven for this pattern, you use a very light weight woven to give more of the effect of the light knit instead of the stiffer um, fabric. Um, so that's what I'm using. And then the one thing that I kind of, I'm not sure that will work is obviously the neckband. Um, you cannot stretch woven. So the neckband is usually done a little bit smaller than the actual neck area. So it kind of pulls the neck in. Um, and so obviously we won't be able to do that. But here's the good news. For the boat neck option of this dress, we do have uh, facing. So you could use the boat neck option with the facing. The only thing I would uh, be careful with is to make sure that that opening of the boat neck is going to fit through your head as you put it on because it will not stretch. Um, so, but I like the way the um, the scoop neck looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some facing for my scoop neck neckline. And I'm gonna show you how I'm going to do it. I'm gonna grab a piece of paper. You can grab a piece of paper, you can grab um, anything piece of uh uh what do you call it a christmas wrapping paper left over whatever you want to use i'm going to grab my neckline of my bodice we have the same for the front and back so i mean this is the back here and then this down here is the front so we're going to start with our back i want to go out about a couple of inches from the uh, neckline here on the shoulder seam so that my facing is a little bit wide because my facing will come like this and then I'm going to go down a couple of inches from the uh, the front neckline because I'm going to cut it on the fold. This is the fold here. So I'm going to trace out my neckline here. This is my back neckline. And what I want to do now is you can either use a, um, a rounded ruler or something like that because we're going to match up here all the way to this spot right here. And this is going to be my back facing. And this is going to be my fold. Now, you wonder, what about seam allowance? Well, on here, you'll have the seam allowance for the shoulder seam when you sew the shoulders together here at the front and back. So there's already a seam allowance here, which is the seam allowance I'm going to use for sewing the front and back together. Because you already have the seam allowance here, I already have the seam allowance on my facing. So I don't need to add that. So that's my back facing piece. And now I'm going to do the same, but for the front, which means I'm going to move my back out of the way. I'm going to place it right on here on top again. I'm going to do my couple of inches here at the top and then a couple of inches here at the bottom. And then I'm going to draw out my neckline. All right, so there's my neckline. Once again, I'm going to match up all the way around. Now, I like to eyeball it because I'm used to... I don't know I just do but you can I'm about see two inches it's gonna be two inches so I okay, this is two inches right here so I, I cut I cut it a little bit short there but um, two inches two inches two inches so you can go ahead and grab your ruler and use your ruler to measure it out 
right so i was going a little bit off but that's okay it really doesn't matter because this is the bottom of the facing so that's okay now this is going to be my fold line and this is my front facing all right obviously this one is only what two inches here eh, one and a half inches so i went down went in a little bit you can do it yeah i did only one and a half because i only did one and a half here if you want it to be a longer like two inches go down all the way two inches and then right but i mean it doesn't really matter the facing for the boat neck is only one and a half inches so either way it just depends on how wide you want that facing to be you all know i am so easy going when it comes to patterns all right, now that I've got my facing, back and front facing, I'm going to be cutting all my pieces for my pattern uh, the same size. I'm not sizing up. I saw somebody did a blog on this and they said the first time they sized up to make sure that it was gonna fit and it was a little bit too big. So the second time they used a regular size and they liked it a lot better. Um, so check out the blogs. It, let me tell you now, if you have not gone to Ellie and Mac's website and check out all the blogs, go ahead and do that because there are so many ideas on there. Um, and some of them have come, some of my ideas uh, for uh, tutorials on here have come from the blog. So make sure you check those out. Um, so anyway, I'm going to cut all the pattern pieces exactly how um, I would cut them for the dress style. And I'm going to cut up my facing. Um, I'm going to cut out one, one of my regular fabric, my fabric that I'm going to be using, and then I'm going to cut one for interfacing so I can put some interfacing on it so it's nice and um, has a little bit of structure. So let me go cut all this out and then we'll come back and sew it up. my pattern pieces are cut out and we're going to get started the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to place the interfacing to the back of my facing because i want the facing to have a little bit of stability so it kind of fits in nicely and this fabric is so thin the interfacing will help a lot with that all right, now we start prepping. I'm gonna grab my facing and I'm gonna place my front and back right sides together here at the shoulder seam. When I go prep my facing, I'm gonna sew at the shoulder seams and then I'm gonna go serge and finish up the raw edges of the outside of the facing, all the outside. So this is the facing it's gonna look like. I'll finish up all the outside. I'm gonna do that on my serger, but you can do a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine or however you want to because woven fabric tends to fray. And so you have to make sure that you finish the raw edges or it'll start fraying on you and that will not be cute. And I'm also going to finish the shoulders raw edges after I sew the straight stitch first. Then I'm gonna grab my bodice front and back and I'm gonna place them facing right sides together. If you're doing pockets, I'm not doing pockets for this one. If you're doing pockets, the instructions for the pockets are on the sew along, but there's also a sewing tutorial for this. Um, and the instructions in the pockets will be on there. As you can see, I do not have enough fabric to do my sleeve all the way down, but that's okay because I don't plan to do the turnover turnover like we do on the uh, dolman essential dolman dress. I plan to just hem normally, and it might be just a shorter sleeve than the pattern calls for, but I just didn't have a ton of fabric, so that's why you see the salvage here, but that's okay. We'll, we'll deal with that when we come to it. Okay, shoulder seams, and then I'm going to also sew my sides. I'm gonna sew my sides of my bodice, and then I'm also going to sew the sides of my skirt. Because, like I said, I'm not doing pockets, I don't have to worry about going around the pockets, I'm just gonna go straight down. If you're doing the dress version, you would just go straight down, all the way down the bodice and the skirt. Again, because this is woven, whoa, just totally destroyed that clip, I am way too strong. Because this is woven, I'm going to sew a straight stitch on my sewing machine first and then go over to my serger and finish off the raw edges. I have been looking for, there is a serger from Baby Lock that has that secure stitch. So it uh, serges and does the secure straight stitch for you all at one. That would be so neat. Now I don't have that capability right now, so that's why I'm gonna do this straight um, stitch first and then I'm going to serge. Wow, 
While I'm here, I'm gonna finish off the edge, the bottom edge of my bodice, just so it doesn't fray on me as I'm working with it on the next couple steps. I'm also going to finish off the bottom and top of this dress, the bottom so that the hemming is easier and the top so that when I go the next step, it won't fray on me. And I know y'all, I need to get a grippy mat. Sometimes my serger just wants to take off and leave me behind. I'll push it all the way back. Alrighty, now that our um, bodice is prepped and that our skirt is prepped we're gonna attach our facing so usually you would be attaching your neckline here or if you're doing the boat neck you could be attaching your facing on here so it's the same way we're just gonna grab this facing and you're gonna put the right sides together you're gonna match the shoulder seams, seams the shoulder seams and then it should match up perfectly all the way around and then you're just gonna sew it up. I'm gonna do first a straight stitch like I did um, when I was sewing everything else and then a serger stitch so that it can finish it all off. Now at the same time I'm attaching that, I'm gonna work on this bodice right here. I'm gonna grab my skirt and my bodice and we're gonna fit them right sides together. So I can either fit the skirt into the bodice or the bodice into the skirt, we're just gonna fit them so that they match up and you can find the front and the back of the bodice because you want them to fit right sides together I'm matching here the sides and they should fit like right together so two sides here and what you're going to do is pin them all the way around so I've got my body my bodice and my skirt touching here at the hem. This is how we're creating, this is when we create the casing here. Um, so what we're going to do here, instead of serging it together, because we're gonna create a casing, I'm gonna go an inch up from the seam right here, uh, from the edge, I mean, we're gonna go an inch up. Now, obviously I searched the edge here, so I'm just gonna go like an inch up from there and I'm gonna sew all the way around. You can mark your fabric or like on my sewing machine, I'll be able to see what an inch is. And I'm just gonna sew all the way around the whole thing. I'm gonna do that and I'm going to do the neckline at the same time. All right, so as you can see, ugh, I forgot to serge that edge. All right, I'm gonna go real quickly over there and serge it. You don't really have to, you can just clip it because what you're going to do next is you wanna um, fold it down and steam it and actually sew this seam allowance to your um, facing. So I'm gonna fold it towards my facing and top stitch it and that's gonna help me um, keep it from poking out later. So I'm gonna go serge that, then I'm gonna fold the seam allowance towards the facing and I'm going to do some stitching right here along the edge and that is called edge stitching? Yeah, under stitching. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. And you will be under stitching here. Now at the waist, what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna go back over here to the waist and I'm going to separate the two pieces. You have the bodice and the skirt and we're going to end up trimming this bodice piece because what it's gonna happen is this um, skirt piece is going to come right on top and we're going to top stitch it down and we're going to leave a casing an opening to insert our elastic through but we don't want all this bulk in here so what I'm going to do instead of cutting it because this is woven and I still don't want it to fray inside I'm going to go in with my serger and go really close to the edge and just trim it as I go with the knife of the serger and just leaving like a little serge edge here so it's just a little seam allowance of a serge all the way around um, but it's finished, so it's not gonna fray on me. So I'm gonna go do that, and then I'll be folding this over and top stitching it all the way around, but I'll come back for that. As I'm doing this, I wanna make sure I pull the other piece back, because this is gonna help me do the casing, so I don't wanna cut that one. So you wanna move it back, if, 
if you're doing the same thing I'm doing, you could just trim it and sew it down. <laughs> All right, so now I'm pushing that seam allowance towards the facing and I'm gonna stitch it down. While I'm here, I'm folding down that facing over the shoulder seam, well, up to the shoulder seam and I'm going to right over the shoulder seam. Right in the ditch right there, I'm gonna put a stitch to hold my facing down. It's like right on the seam so you can't even see it. But then that way my facing stays attached down. And I'm gonna do it on the other shoulder as well. Now as I was saying, at the waistline, we're going to sew the, I'm gonna fit my dress through here. And I'm going to sew this. So here is my um, bodice allowance that I cut off and here's my other inch allowance from my skirt. I'm pushing that up towards the bodice and I'm going to top stitch it down to create that casing and I'm going to leave a gap to insert my elastic and I'm going to make sure that nothing is touching underneath it and it's nice and tight. I'm changing my thread because that thread I've been using is no good and I've been having issues with that kind of thread for like the last few times I've used it and I just I'm tired of messing with it over and over again so I'm using a new thread also I hope you enjoy the piano in the background from my son all right here we go all right don't forget to leave your gap for your elastic all right next step is to grab your elastic and we're gonna fit it right through that opening Now we're gonna match up those two and sew them. I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch and sew them closed and then I'm gonna sew that gap closed. And all we've got left to do is to hem. Since I finished the raw edge at the bottom, I'm just gonna fold over and do a hem. But first I'm gonna try it on to make sure how, how much I wanna hem. And then on the sleeve, I gotta trim that extra piece because I had longer on the front and shorter on the back because remember I didn't have enough fabric. I'm gonna trim that and then I'm going to hem the sleeve as well. So I'll just fold over once and then fold over again, um, probably a quarter inch, fold, fold. So I'm gonna go do that and then we'll be done. Fold, fold, stitch, and then we'll be done. Before I close it, I'm gonna try it on and make sure I did it tight enough. I did it about an inch or two tighter than my waist, but I don't like things super tight on my waist, so I didn't do it very tight. So I might have to take it in a little bit more, but we'll try it all on and finish it up. All right, friends, we are all done and it looks so good. I am so excited that it turned out so perfectly. Like I said earlier, I made the same size. This is the size that I would wear for the regular pattern. The only thing I did different was that facing, which turned out amazing. Um, I love it. I think it looks really, really super cute. Um, I definitely am going to be making some more of the different lengths and stuff like that because it's just perfect. And with this fabric, it was like a flowy, really flowy fabric. Um, it looks really, really great. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please comment, like, share, subscribe if you haven't. Let me know if you're going to be using this hack to create your own uh, woven essential dress pattern. Um, and then come find us on Facebook so you can share your mix with us because we'd love to see them. We're also on Instagram, so check that out. All that information is on the box below. And um, yeah, comment below and let me know if you love it. I'll see you all next time. Bye.